I am standing tonight to share with people of God that God sees everything that you're doing. I went through a series of trying to fool God. I was fooling people, but I had to find out the hard way that you cannot fool God. I was playing church, sitting in the pulpit with my legs crossed, looking dignified, holier than thou. Uh, would come in God's house like I had been distributed wings from heaven, and I was going to take off before the service was over. They would give me the microphone and say, now preach. And I would say, let not your heart be troubled. Say yes. No substance. Manipulating, womanizing, doing everything I could do. I know some preachers don't like preachers to say that, but uh, I think that's what's wrong now. There's too much sugar coating. Uh, amen. And, uh, I think God is serving notice to every Pentecostal pimp that God is tired of your mess. Amen. I know you don't like that. And, uh, in God's house, playing in church. Until I got on the limb of unsafety, God got tired of my mess. And a bit of advice, you may be fooling the folks down here, but you are not fooling God. God sees everything that you're doing, and I want you to understand something, that God will get tired of your mess. God got tired of my mess, and God withdrew his arms of protection from around me. See, I was one of those persons that would come in God's house, and I had a Simon Says mentality. You know, Simon says, somebody had to tell me to lift my hands. Somebody had to tell me to open my mouth. Somebody had to tell me to stand up on my feet. When, when you think on the goodness of Jesus, you ought to know that it's time to give God some praise. I got on the limb of unsafety and God got tired of my mess, withdrew his arms of protection from around me and allowed Satan to have free course in my life. God got tired of me. I was wrapped up in me. I was in love with myself. And when you become in love with yourself, you, 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 you're in bad shape. I was so in love with me until I could not hear God trying to warn me. You see, God is slow to anger and he is quick to mercy. But there comes a time that God gets tired of your mess. I found myself losing the desire to go to church came to church and would go through the motions you know I, I had practiced a shout I know y'all gonna get mad with me but some of y'all the shout y'all shouting is not the shout that God gave you when you first got saved uh, some of y'all done went home and practiced when you first got saved, you didn't know how to coordinate your left foot with your right hip, and you didn't know nothing about facial expressions. Amen. All you knew how to do was jump up and down because something got a hold of you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, and you couldn't explain it. So all you can do was jump up and down. But now you've got a shout that's so difficult. And you don't even need no music. You can almost skate right across the floor. But is that the shout that God gave you? I became to the point that I wanted to show out in church. And so when the music would start, I would shout. When the word would come forth, it was time for me to go. But God got tired of my mess. I found myself laying face down in the fire, burning from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. And I want to share this for the benefit of somebody that feels that just because you have been, you've received a degree and you've got a little money, that you can do whatever you want to do in God's house. Uh, 
I don't care if you've received, you went to the College of Hamburger and you've received a degree in Hamburgerology and you're the head cook at Burger King. When you get to God's house, you better understand that if it had not been for God, you wouldn't be nothing. I went to a particular facility that I had constructed and people were going to be moving into this facility and I wanted to get it ready and should have been at church but didn't go to church. And the things that used to amaze me about sin just started to amuse me. And I found myself on a Sunday being somewhere I didn't need to be. And as I went into the, the facility and noticed that the gas system was not working properly, I decided I was going to light it. The commercial system went down into the basement and cut the pilot on and stuck my head inside the window and kept trying to strike the match but the flame would not stay lit. Seven times the flame would go out. But on the eighth time, the flame stayed lit. And as I opened the valve and stuck my head inside the commercial pilot window, boom, it blew up in my face. The explosion was of such great impact until it took the, the skin off of my forehead. It blew the top of my head open blew my eyes completely out of my head. My lips were blown off. My jaws were blown off. As you can see the circular scars, how it blew the eyes out of my head and the doctors had to sew the eyes back in and they told me that I would never be able to see. Ah, but I know a man. They told me that I would never be able to see, but when God got through, not only can I see, but I have 20, 20 vision. They told me I would never be able to use my hands. I have man-made lips and man-made jaws, and they said I would never be able to talk. And for two years, six months, they prepared a vocal box, and they attached it, and the sound would be amplified from my throat. But when Jesus got through, he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And I don't know about you, but when I come in God's house and I see people with their own eyes and I see people with their own hands and I see people with their own legs and I think about having somebody else's lungs and somebody else's kidneys and somebody else's blood and somebody else's fingers and man-made lips and man-made jaws. And when I see people sitting on their seat and you got to motivate them to open their mouth and you got to pump them to stand up on their feet and you got to push them to say hallelujah, you don't know how blessed you are. You ought to be able to tell your neighbor, neighbor, when I think on the goodness of Jesus. And you know, I hear people saying that, and y'all excuse me, I hear people saying when I think on the goodness of Jesus, and then they sit back down and fold their legs, and oh, y'all don't hear me. But if you were really thinking on the goodness of Jesus, when you were wretched and done, and no, no, there was the people that walked on you and stepped on you. People said you wasn't going to be nothing, but God picked you up and turned you around. If you were really thinking on the goodness of Jesus, there'd be a pat in your feet and a clap in your hand, and you'd be shaking your head. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When I think on the goodness of Jesus. I don't know about you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I came to sing my song. I came to shout my shout. Tell him, say, neighbor, if you don't intend on shouting, Watch my press, because I got to shout tonight. I feel I got to get my blessing tonight. And I'm not leaving till I get what I came for. Put your hands together and give Jesus an applaud tonight.